my bad if I sound a little tired. It's because I am. It's almost three in the morning. I've been recording videos since 7 p.m., 6 p.m. actually. So yeah, I can't say what I was doing because if you saw my last video, I've been working on it for a month. I don't want to give no spoilers. I might throw some teasers here and there, but for now, I'm going to keep it under wraps. But let's just say I was watching this anime while doing it. I was multitasking. So if there are a little details I might get wrong, keep in mind, I was doing something completely else while I was watching this show. And to be completely honest with you, when I got to season two, I was watching the anime in two times speed just because I wanted to finish it in time so I could make a video because I was going to miss the upload today. If I didn't make a video, if I didn't watch it in two times speed, it's not like I was missing anything to be honest. Kami is good, but it's not really my usual type. Anyways, like I just said, I'm tired. Let's kind of get this through as quick as possible. I feel like I don't need to give backstory to this anime. It's kind of in the title. Komi can't communicate. And there's a girl called Komi. I wonder what she can't do. Communicate. Okay, we got that past us. Anyways, she becomes friends with MC Tadano. They don't actually have verbal speech she kind of just like tries to say something and Tadano is just like so on key that he knows what she's saying and this anime is a slight romance so you would think okay he's pretty intelligent emotionally he's still dense we make no progress in the romance aspect here whole 24 episodes not a single confession not a single handhold not a single hug not a single smooch not a single romance moment but then again it's mostly a slice of life so cool anyways Tadano Komi they're homies now. Basically, Komi's whole goal is to make 100 friends by the end of high school or something like that. And obviously, Tadano is going to help her. Her first friend is this guy, girl. I don't know. They kind of switched her or him around a couple times. Tadano thinks she's a dude, but the story and everyone around thinks she's a girl. I don't know. I don't think they ever explained it, but I think she is a girl. But Tadano probably thinks she's a guy because they went to middle school and she dressed like a dude. Anyways, Tadano just makes her Komi's first friend. Whoa. Second friend. Then Komi makes another friend. Don't remember her name. Let's just say she's a freak. Like, really a freak. Now, one day Tadano's walking to school. Then bro gets snatched up by this bitch. Keeping the story short, she's a yandere for Komi. So she kind of just kidnapped Tadano to keep her away. To keep him away from her. Now, the problem is, they found Tadano kidnapped in her room. They found out she was a weirdo. And Komi still chose to be friends with her. Maybe that's just poor judgment of character but uh let a nigga kidnap my homie i'm not fucking with them or let's flip the roles let a bitch kidnap my homie i'm not fucking with them we get a pull episode sadly no beach episode pull episodes are good but everybody knows the beach episode will always be superior the purpose of a pull episode is for the girl to get hit on and then mc comes and save her that's the only purpose of pull episodes but beach episodes are just all around vibes that's why it's going to always be superior some more episodes we meet Komi's family they all just like her except her mom her mom's the only chatting one her family kind of confuses me at first i thought there was some weird shit going on because her dad is quiet just like her but then i thought and used my mind for a second and pieced it together that Komi got her personality i don't know why i was thinking this but i was getting like Komi's brother confused with her uncle or something so it kind of threw me off for a second it took me a minute i won't lie i was a little slow anyways we also get a fireworks festival and you know the universal rule every fireworks festival there is going to be a major progression there was not one Komi wrote something down but she quickly erased it I don't even remember what she wrote down, but it was progressive. All in all, she canceled out the whole purpose of this episode. Romance was slowing down. So we had to throw some jealousy in there. Tadano started hanging around another bitch. Don't remember her name. She was cool though. There wasn't on no romance shit. There was just actually cool. But obviously Komi's gonna get jealous. But this ends quickly. The girl sees Komi and Tadano together and says, Ah, uh, never mind. I'll let them have their thing. Now we got a cultural festival arc. Ain't much happened here. We did get Tadano cross-dressing though, which is kind of interesting. And finally, we finally get progression. But we're already at the end of the anime. The most we got was a five second dance with Komi and Tadano. Five seconds and then homie just wants to interrupt and then everybody wants to join in. Now we're on season two. I'm finna blitz this up. I already have been but like but like there was a lot less in season two than season one to talk about. It does start off with one of my favorite characters in this whole show though. Don't remember his name but he's kind of cool. He looked like a delinquent but on the inside he's just a normal nigga but people misjudge him. It kind of reminds me of a couple other characters. Obviously he becomes homies with Tadano. We get a Christmas episode which is actually 
kind of rare now that I think about it. We always get winter. They always do New Year's, but there's only a 30% chance that they go to Christmas. Like they just forget it's a complete holiday. Oh yeah, we still get a New Year's episode. It's never excluded. Every slice of life has a New Year's episode. As long as they go to winter, they're always going to have a New Year's episode no matter what. We also had a sick episode, which means progression. And by progression, I just mean she held his hand while he was sleeping. And then homie popped in to ruin the moment. I swear every time they finna do something, this nigga comes out of nowhere and ruins the moment. We also get a Kyoto trip arc, another classic. They hit every base in this anime. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they hit every base ex except beach episode. Why they, Why do they always go to Kyoto though? Don't they got more places in fucking Japan, bro? Go to like Okinawa or something. I don't know. I'm just naming shit I've been to in Persona 5. I couldn't really tell you for real. Anyways, while we're on the trip, we get confirmation that Komi does like Tadano. I mean, it was pretty obvious, but she confirmed it and says that she likes him here. She ain't saying it to him. She probably never will say it to him, but admitting it is the first step. And in my mind, that's the last valid moment in this anime. Not saying the rest is bad, but like that's the last major moment. I mean, we do get a Valentine's episode, which is pretty nice, but it wasn't anything crazy. Final episode ends on some cool shit, reliving memories and stuff like that. Just a calm little recap or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's the end of the anime. I know the manga is still ongoing, but I see no reason for them to come back with a season three unless they progress more in their romance. There's no reason for us to get a season three in the anime, at least, because I'm like, they already hit every single base for Slice of Life. I don't know how they can keep going. If they do keep going and invent new shit, I'm gonna say props to y'all if y'all can. I'll take a peek at the manga later. Maybe they do. 